Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining with us for the Word of God. And I believe you are ready for the Word of God. You are excited to hear the Word of God. It's important for us to hear the Word of God. Why? Because the Word encourages us. Why? Because Word corrects us. Why? Because God tells us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear. How can we not fear? When we cannot fear? Because when, when we'll know that God is for us. No matter what we go through, no matter how we go through, God is for us. God is with us. God is in us and is carrying us and is, and, and is leading us. So when we know that, we shall not fear of the things that is happening around us. Of Even though we will walk to the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear. Even enemies when they are surrounding us, he, God's promise is that he will prepare a table for us. That means he will prepare a table, not empty table, full of food, full of the things that you desire in your heart. It will be for you. When? When we learn the word of God and when we'll know. See, it's very clear. God says, my people are destroyed because of what? Lack of knowledge. So when we don't have the knowledge of God, when we don't know what God wants to tell us, when, we don't, when, when, when God corrects us, we might say, oh, God is after me. He doesn't like me. No, God corrects us so that we can know about him. We can know that his love is greater. He's, he's loving us and he wants his people, his children to succeed in life, to be prosperous in life, to be healed, living in divine health. That's what God wants. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. The, and, and, and when Jesus came, he came to save us. He came to save us from every dart of the devil. He came to save us from every weapon that, 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 that the devil want to uh, throw at us. So we should know that even though we walk to the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear. Why? Because God is with us. God is for us. God is working in us and God is working through us. The whole world system, remember this, the whole world system can be against us, but it shall not prosper in his plan. Because God is our protection and God will protect us. No weapon that the world can prepare against the children of God, it shall not accomplished. It shall not be accomplished because God is our protector. He protects us. Even if you remember when, when God, uh, when the children of Israel was in the valley and there was mountain and, and there was a king and another Kesa, the ba Balaam and Balak, they wanted to curse the children of God and the people down below, they don't know what's happening up the mountain. But what happened? The, 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 the prophet uh, who wanted to open his mouth and curse God's children, God put the words in his mouth and the word was a blessing. So God can save them. God will save us. And, 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 and God has already uh, covered us with the, with the blood of Jesus. So remember, remember also, the world is passing away and the last of it. As you have heard last week and, and, and again today, you will hear about the three sisters of sin. And, 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 you, and, and we continue to learn about that. So remember this, that the world is passing. We should not be part of the world system that is going around. We should be, the, we should be part of God's word system. And, 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 and because God's word shall not pass away. The Bible says uh, the, the, the earth and heaven will pass away, but not even one dot of, of, of God's word will pass away. So the world is passing away. We don't trust the world, but he who does the will of God shall abide forever. Remember this, as long as you look, uh, looking into God's word or you're looking at Jesus, you will not sink. But the moment you take away your eyes from God's word, you will surely sink. So why we take out our eyes or take away our eyes from the word of God that gives us, that makes us walk on the water. As Peter walked on the water, as, as, as long as his eyes were fixed to Jesus, he was walking on the water. The moment his eyes went to the wave that was around him, and, and, and see, before even he walked on the water, the waves were there, the waves were high. Even, even it's not possible to walk on the water, but Peter did it. Why? Because his eyes was on Jesus. Even Jesus said for him to come. So I want to remind you and tell you as we get ready to hear the word of God. Remember, don't, don't let these three sisters 
of sin deceive us. Don't let these three sisters, no matter how pretty they might look, no matter how beautiful they might look, no matter how shining they might look, but remember, those three sisters of sin will lead you to death at the end. So, why we want to die? We don't die. We live in Jesus because Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance to the full till it overflow. So, we live with Jesus and fix our eyes on Jesus. And as I remind you again, as for our topic today is the three sisters of sin. Let's welcome Brother Brian. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Church. Glory to God, hallelujah, for our God is good and he is good all the time, amen. His mercies never end. You know, when we say the word God is a good God, that word good cannot be used with any other but to God himself because he is good, Jesus is good, his Holy Spirit is good hallelujah well i'm excited to share with you today the word of the lord and we are doing part two of the sermon on the series we began the three sisters of sin <laughs> and i believe you recall that when i was telling you about my childhood days when in a place called Siberia, just right between Siberia and Batnikama, there in Fiji, there was this uh, three uh, mountain formation, which uh, which seemed like there was th was three identical ones, and then a lot of people called it the Three Sisters Mountain, and that's where I get this uh, because these three things that we are talking about, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, represented they are connected together. They have to deal with the self, the life, the old man that wants to come up, the world way of living rather than the word way of living. Anyway, we'll get into that. Let us pray and go forward, okay? Heavenly Father, I give you praise and thanks for your Holy Spirit whom you have sent to be our comforter, to be our teacher. Father, I bring to you people your word, not my word, your word. And I expect the anointing to flow through my lips, thinking through my mind, to your people as they hear your words. May today and this very day, and those who will watch this sermon later on sometime, let them be touched by your glory. Let them be touched by the anointing. Heal their bodies. Restore their lives, Lord. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, say with me, something good is about to happen in my life right now. Yes, say, something good is about to happen in my life right now. Just because you said that, in faith, I believe Good thing is about to happen in your life. All things will begin to happen that you have been praying for, that you have been seeking God to answer. I pray that the, the, the answers that you have been seeking will come to you even right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Well, something good truly is happening. Okay, let's come back to this uh, text scripture that we are using found in First John. Chapter 2, 15 to 17, and it's very important. So I'm going to go back and going to read to you very slowly and systematically. We're going to read and go forward. I, I pray that you will learn a lot. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will unveil your eyes. Because what most people won't tell you is that to have friendship with the world is to make God your enemy. Now, world does not mean, uh, I'm talking about the people in the sense uh, of those who are the believers. I'm not talking about, see, there is one world, there's three uh, types of, uh, when, they, when we hear the word world, the Bible describes it uh, in three uh, particular ways. Number one is the world, the creation, the cosmos. Number two, the world is 
those whom we were part of, the unsaved, the ungodly. And the Bible says, God so loved the world, the ones who were not saved. So, but now today when you are saved, you are in the world, but not of the world. Okay. Now, then there is the third part of the world, which is a system, the way of doing things, the way of not doing things, where the old, where the, the, the father, the, the liar, uh, the, the father is the devil who is a liar, who runs a system based on, uh, on, on trying to get the souls of people, destroying lives. So it's a system of selfishness. It's a system based on, on pride and arrogance and, and, and where you, uh, it's just like what you're going to give in exchange for your soul. The devil takes all of you and destroys you by giving the glory of the world that is fading away okay so that's what i'm against is the system way of doing things which is, which is actually where the forbidden desires come from where everything that god has said there is an opposition it's in the spirit of antichrist that's what it is it's the spirit of antichrist and we don't want any part of that okay Praise God. All right, let's go read this, okay? And then we'll go forward. In the book of 1 John, chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 15. 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the system which is ruled and run by the devil, the love of the Father is not in him. And I'll show you why is Paul uh, here, not Paul, John, so firm about this. Because that's what has happened is when the church has become worldly and they've given to a system of provision, system of healing, a system uh, that the devil has arranged. I'm not saying medical and all these things that uh, God, the wisdom that God has provided to save many of the devil. No, there is a system within that system that steals your money makes uh, even wrong medication that can kill your life or, or, or things that are run by big pharma companies. They, they are just uh, uh, lobbying things out there to just get money from men. So it's more like greed rather than really helping people. So there's a lot there. Financial system that is built on, on debt to, to keep you bound from living in, in freedom or, or whole system of how businesses are done. Just that few people in the elite section of life can only profit and that you have to always walk and not have enough or you have to live each day by your, your wages day after day or pay, like people say paycheck after paycheck that's all you live by well i believe there is a highway of living that's called god's way now let me tell you something i believe the bible i believe that god's word is final authority regardless of what somebody says regardless of what i feel what god says is the truth and not just because you can find a scripture but whatever god says in context it must be the overall truth found from book of genesis to the book of revelation in in connection with the character of God okay so I believe what when we read the scripture and it says do not love it do not love it and hallelujah I, I just see something while I was saying that do not love the world do not uh, embrace because in the world there is these three sisters <laughs> let me say it, the three sisters of sin like the three mountains that I was talking about these are not of God and I, okay, let's let me show what happens if you love the world. You number one will the love of the Father won't be with you because I will show you in a moment that the world has a way of 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 distracting you, of pulling you away from from looking at Jesus. One of the good examples that we can see about that is how uh, Peter, when uh, when he uh, when G when he asks Jesus, "Can I come?" He said, "Come, Peter, come." <laughs> and you know what Peter did? Peter said, "All right, I'm going to walk on the water." And he got out of the boat and started to walk. Now, while he was walking and looking to Jesus, he was walking. But then he, the Bible says, he looked on the sides and he saw the wind boisterous, meaning the waves were there. And he he came to his senses and said, "Oh, in this situation, I'm actually supposed to sing." And guess what? He began to sing. 
But as long as he was looking into Jesus, as long as, let me say spiritually, you're looking in the word of God, you are, you are looking at the promises of God, you will not sink. When you stand firm on what he has said, you cannot sink. But then there is times when church stops listening to God. You start listening to yourself. You start listening to the system of what somebody else is saying or, or even some pastors are saying or some leaders are saying that is not biblical or they are doing that you want to copy to do but God didn't tell you to do that and be that way. So we see here that Jesus, uh, Paul, uh, no, I'm, I'm, why I'm saying Paul now? <laughs> okay, uh, John is saying, the apostle John, he's, he's been with Jesus. He, he's, he's lived with Jesus. So I believe when they say something, Something. They learned it from Jesus because Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation, but in me you have peace and victory. And then even ahead, he goes ahead, John goes ahead and writes, and this is the victory that will overcome the world, the system. Everything that is out there, we can overcome. We can overcome lack, we can overcome debt, we can overcome problems, crises, disasters. How? Even our faith now faith in jesus our trust in his provision he's our uh, he's our captain he's our provider he's our rock when we have our faith in him ooh, let no matter what comes we will win we will win we have the victory in the name of jesus so look at how it starts he says do not, my children, do not love the world, the system of doing things and being things. For if you love the world, the love of a father cannot be in you. For all that is in the world, now he goes ahead and, and begins to describe what, the, uh, what is out there. He says, all that is in the world is this. There's three things, the three sisters of sin, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And this is not of the Father, but of the world. Now this lust which I describe to you is a craving, is a longing for forbidden things. So I, I, I coined this statement up for you, the forbidden desires, which is against God's, God's word, the lust of eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. It's all about you. This is not from God. This is what used to rule your life. But when you gave your life as a surrender to Jesus and he became the Lord of your life, you became a servant, a son, but you also became a servant. And now you serve the Lord, the master, Jesus. Now it's not about me any longer. It's all about what he says that goes. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a good place to say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so he says, don't love the world. All that is you will find in the world is forbidden desire. And I've written that down, what this forbidden desires entails. It says, the lust of the flesh, which is the forbidden desires for sensual pleasures. pleasures. The lust of the flesh, right? The forbidden desires of sensual pleasures, pleasures of what you feel, you want, you crave. Then we have the lust of the eyes, the forbidden desires of the mind and imagination. There are certain things God did not tell you to do or be part of what people want. Then we have the pride of life, the forbidden desires of self-exhortation above your allotted portion. Self-made, selfish, uh, selfish, first, you know, these are all that God didn't, didn't give us. God says, he who humbles himself, I will exalt. See, uh, there were people in, in scripture, the disciples, parents came and said, uh, I want my sons to sit at your right hand and your left hand. And, and Jesus said, that's not for mine to give. And then he called a child up front and said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, you need to be like that child. It's all opposite to what the world says. You've got to tread on people to get somewhere. You've got to lie and cheat to make it in life. You've got to extract more than what people honestly need to give to you. No. People think, well, I deserve more to, in my walk. Like a lot of people want increment. A lot of people want raises and promotion. But their walk level, their ethics in walk is, is, is I would say, just close to not even what the amount sometimes they receive. So how do you tackle that? Because we don't raise up our standard and we want to expect more. That's all about yourself. So people who fight for more unjustly 
expecting more when they are not putting in the effort. That's wrong. Now, what the Bible says is we are not of the world. We, we, we are not supposed to love that system. We are not supposed to live in that system. We are different. We are supposed to love when people say hate. We are supposed to give when, the, when it's, uh, people say keep. We are supposed to forgive. We are supposed to walk in the Holy Ghost, led by His grace. We are, we are supposed to bear all things, endure all things. We are supposed to excel in life. We are supposed to be examples. Come on, now turn around to somebody where you're sitting and say, I am supposed to be what God says I am to be. Okay? I am supposed to be what God has supposed me to be. I'm supposed to be blessed. God said so. God said so. I'm supposed to be healed. God said so. So if I'm not living up to the standard, it's time now and I'm going to have to rise up and do something about it. Hallelujah. Well, we believe we receive that in Jesus' name. Okay, so all that is in the world is forbidden desire of, of fleshly, uh, sensual pleasures, pleasures, forbidden uh, lust of the eyes, the forbidden, forbidden desires of the mind, our imagination, and the pride of life, the forbidden desires of self-exhortation above your allotted portions. And I will show you how Adam and Eve had that problem where, where they thought, that there was still something more to being who we were that God had not given us. That's always like people, they think they are all right and they start questioning God of the things they can't, can't see or receive, have not received. So when they pray, they expect God to answer them the way they want God to answer them. <laughs> Listen, your prayers must be first where you are not praying your own will. Because as a believer, everything he wills, you will. I'll say that again. As a believer, it's not about what you will. Is my will is his will. And that's the only will we know. Every time or any time you say, I will, you are rising up in pride. I'm not talking about when you say by faith, I will not fall by the grace of God. I believe I will make it in Jesus' name. That is trusting His promises, His providence, His grace on your life. Okay? And the power of the Holy Spirit by which you will. But when you are wanting God to do something for you which is against what He has said, it is your desires. You will learn. A lot of people say, God will give me the desires of my heart. But let me ask you, have you submitted and died to yourself so that everything in you is totally desired by Him? And it's all His desires in you that that's what you desire? Let me put it this way. Have you forsaken all? Jesus said, if you haven't forsaken all, all and taken up your cross and follow me, you can, are not worthy of my kingdom. Have you died to yourself? Hallelujah. I pray we will learn the power of surrender where many times we question and are offended or, or we give up praying because we think the prayer should have been answered when we wanted it to be answered. Well, by the way, prayers are answered the moment you pray by faith. The manifestation and the things on this earth sometimes take time, but when we stand firm and persistent, we will see the answers. Okay? We will. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let me read on and quick, let's quickly go further. It says, For the world is passing away, and the lust, the forbidden desires of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Abides forever. You want to abide forever, you've got to let go of the world, the system. You know, I said that I, the Holy Spirit reminded me something was, I'm going to go ahead and read this for you. It's found in the book of Psalms, and I believe most of you have, 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 have heard, read this and, and, and have heard somebody read this to you. But I, I'm just going to go ahead and read this to you right now, which is not actually part of what <laughs> I have prepared here, but it's part of what good God had me prepare, actually. It says in Psalms chapter 1, Blessed is the man who walks, in the counsel, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. You see, what is this ungodly, scornful and sinner? These are three things of the world. 
they are three things, just like lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. If they are fed by ungodly sinners and scoffers. They sit down, you stay around them, they feed you this world and you receive the word and you come to church and you come to prayer, you come to time of with God and you question God and you, you, your unbelief and all that you've gotten from there, you are trying to give it to God. God will not have it. <laughs> Let me tell you, God will not have you bring the world to his presence and you trying to sell that to God. It will not work. God will just not do anything. That's why the Holy Spirit and the angels can't do much for our lives because our, our living, our, like, like I said, if you didn't see the first part of this sermon, I said, how do we overcome lusts of the flesh or forbidden desires that are fighting against us? Is to live and walk in the spirit. What does that actually mean? It means to uh, to be used to a place where it's actually literal walking. It doesn't mean walking and living. So what do you do? Is living is actually the word that you could say better would be abiding. You abide in the Holy Spirit. How do you abide? One of of the abiding powers, are the power of prayer. You you communicate. You talk with God. You talk with the Spirit of God, and, and you abide by staying in the Word. Knowing the ways of God, understanding scripture, understanding the flow of the Holy Spirit. Because you must remember, uh, uh, our five senses, are, are they touch our physical world. But when it says be led by the Spirit, you can't touch the Holy Spirit with your physical and flesh. No, you, you've got to come deeper or especially higher in the Spirit where you let your spirit man by faith, with spirit objects like faith, love, joy, peace, uh, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, patience. With these, you allow the, the fruit to flow. And then you, whatever it's required of you, th those are uh, outward manifestations of you being led by the Holy Spirit. You walking in the Spirit. So, so to, be, to be led and to walk in the spirit where you are not fulfilling the lust or forbidden desires of the flesh is when, uh, uh, like somebody said, I read, uh, he said, I, I think it was Rick Renner who, who wrote and said, it's like you being used to your home, your house. You are so comfortable, uh, the rooms to go into the places, your sofa, you know where everything is set. So even if the lights are out, you know the path to take. You are so used to that. So when he says live and walk in the spirit, you are so used to the presence of God. You are so comfortable. You, you've lived and you've walked with him. You know what he's saying. You know he wouldn't say a bad word through your mouth. <laughs> you know you cannot swear. You know you cannot be angry and say something foolishly. You know you cannot act unbecomingly. You know you cannot not steal. You know you cannot commit an adultery and fornication and think evil in your heart and mind. You, you, you know because you've lived with him. You know that will hurt the Spirit of God that you don't have idols in your life. Hallelujah. You, 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 you're given to Him. That's why the Bible says, when you live and walk in the spirit of love and power, your walking with the Holy Spirit is revealed by the fruit that is produced in your life. If those fruit of the Spirit are not evident in your life, let me tell you, <laughs> I doubt that you are walking led by the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God's presence leading and guiding you, you are not struggling in your flesh. You have no lust that is holding you bound and that you cannot go further. Why? Because you are trusting the Lord Spirit in you. You are bringing forth fruit. He's bringing forth fruit in you because you're giving, given to Him through prayer, through conversation with Him, through meditation of the Word of God. By spending time around His books and messages, you have, you have just enveloped yourself in His presence. And so out of that comfort, out of that living, you just don't just shoot out and go and sin. You can't because that's not 
your natural habitat. That's not where you live. That's not who you are. That's not what you do. For example, I've said many times, as if you have a small child grow up in a home that has a never sworn or they don't use swear words. Guess, 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 I mean, think about it. That child growing up, even as angry as the child will become ever in his life. But if, if, he, if he never saw the parents angry, so obviously it will going to be very hard for the child to be angry. But that child will grow up never knowing how to swear. He'll never swear. Unless he heard the swear words, but if he never heard it, he won't do it. The same thing is when we have stayed around the Holy God, spent time in His Holy Presence, spent time in His Holy Word, you converse with the Holy Spirit, the thrice Holy God, Holy, 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 will walk in your life holiness such, in such measure that you all you know, all you do, all you say, all you want to see, all you want to hear, it's not going to be lust and worldly. It's going to be holy. Amen. And I believe uh, Paul very well, uh, very nicely put that in, in, uh, in the book of Philippians where he says, My brother, whatsoever things are lovely, just be well, lovely of a good report. Think on those things. So you see that? You want to walk in the Spirit? Think on those things. Believe the love of God. Believe the brotherhood love of the believers, the patience, the goodness, meekness. We already have enough problem in the world. And you don't want to join the world and create problem in the house of God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just encouraging you today. I believe I could have just rushed into the message, but I'm taking time because God is revealing so many things to us today that as we leave, don't become worldly. They were, they, before they, in days past, they, this word worldly was very, very prevalent in churches where there was uh, the churches of holiness, churches of sanctification. They gave themselves, uh, well, they went to extreme, obviously, uh, but, yet, but there was power in the church. Even they, they, they did go to extremes, but there was power. They was more conscious of prayer and the presence of God rather than their bodily satisfaction and desires. Today, uh, people would fulfill their desires and say, well, God loves me and, and you know, I'm under grace and, and even if I'm drinking and smoking and if I'm, uh, I'm playing around here and there in my relationship and even though I'm stealing at workplace, uh, even though I'm not tithing, even though I'm cheating and lying with my mouth and I'm dishonest person, even though I'm angry, God, I'm under grace. God understands. <laughs> that's, that's something. You are lost. You are deceived. Doing all those things, being in the world, you just make yourself an enemy of all righteousness. Uh, just like this man who wanted to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit, thinking that he could have power. No, you're... If you just want answers from God, if you just want healing from God, if you just come to church to get your life happy and those bad things in life will not happen, then what you're going to do is you're here for a benefit. You want God to just get to heaven. No, God is the, is the life of light and life that you are living. When you get saved, He's the breath on your being. He's the assurance by which you live. For without Him, you and I can do nothing. Church, I encourage you today. As you listen to me, may the Spirit of God touch you. May you here and right now as a minister, I believe you will get out of you. Like, as you are here in this sermon and this service right now listening, inside of you will rise up in holy fervor and zeal for the presence of God, for holiness, for thoughts to be purified, for hands to be purified, ears to be purified, for attitudes and desires to be purified and washed by the blood so there is not found in us a blame. We will be a blameless, blemishless, uh, sanctified, given up to God, church, a believer, a temple through which the Holy Spirit can move. Hallelujah. He wants to move through 
you and through me and even right now may he move may he move in you kura bata tayara bashanda oh ramanda barata bashikiri there is power waiting to be released the world and its pleasures and its lusts have kept people bound so that they cannot spring out into life abundance because we as believers were supposed to take over take charge through prayer you know i really am of that belief because the church became lawless we threw away the laws of god and we wouldn't want to listen to that as we think we are too too smart and we understood grace grace never told you to throw away the laws of god because the principle the, of god was set in there for a purpose but just because paul said i have i would have never known what sin is except through the law he wasn't condemning and doing away with yes for salvation you can't keep the law to be saved but once you are saved the power of the holy spirit has come in you you are accepted by god you are righteous then how do you know the acts that you are doing are righteous before god it's legal it's the law you'll be doing as righteousness it's the law is like a prescription to life that you live by It's not some bondage as a believer you live by. Are we not under bondage? We are saved. We're going to heaven. Praise God. With the church through the law, way eh? we don't want to talk about the law. We are under grace. Guess what? The world became. The world became lawless. Why did the world become lawless so fast? The church became lawless, characterless. We have no boundaries. We do. We don't want to live by principles of holiness. We love the world. We start going and 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 for the sake of some event out there in the world, the church would close down its doors. Oh, there's a worldly game going on. Well, there's a program coming up, so we won't be around. Church. When we return. the power of god returns to the church when the fear and respect of the holy god comes to us and we start living that life the world will be affected it the salvation of the world is upon us it's we are the reason they are not saved or saved hallelujah hallelujah praise god praise god praise god thank you jesus Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. Uh let me read to you something. It's uh found here in the book of 1st Timothy. Uh we probably left there last time. 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. 1st Timothy Chapter 6 verse 9 it says but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into into many foolish and harmful lusts that mean craving forbidden desires which drown men into destruction and perdition and for the love of craving for money is the root of all evil for some which have have gone after uh, have strayed away from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves with many sorrows amen you see that money is not bad but the craving the un- the f- forbidden desires that people once they are blessed they forget god once they got the money they don't show up to church they got the, see many people think if i just have couple of millions of dollars i'll be just good now so no you won't no you won't you don't do that right now when you have not what do you make how do you make us believe that when you do have that you will do what you are not even doing right now being faithful with little you will be faithful over much and that's how growth in the kingdom happens okay so we see here that when you have craving and desires for having money or or, or, or actually having more than you ha- want uh, you need see it's not bad to walk to have more what i'm saying is the craving for money where you would go into all forbidden laws all forbidden desires of your flesh just in order to get something and make a name 
Uh, there is a world's way of being rich. There is God's way of being blessed. And God does want his children to be blessed, by the way. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have more than enough. He wants you to be a blessing to others. You know, many times we wait, who's going to bless me? Who's going to bless me? Why don't you ask this question, whom can I be a blessing to? Whom can I bless today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we will. So, so you see, lust of forbidden desires can will draw you away from faith into the world and will pierce you with pain because the blessing of the Lord makes rich adding no sorrow. But when lust or craving forbidden desires have taken control of you, it will add sorrow to you. If your money is painful and it's not giving you the joy you thought you'd have, is it probably it's the forbidden things and desires in your life you're doing with and through the money or the business, whatever you, you're doing? You might be doing something wrong because the blessing of the Lord should make you rich and happy and joyful, not sad and grumpy and troublesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, now let me show you something. In the book of... Uh, Matthew, I showed you that the devil came to Jesus. I'm not really sure. Let's go there. Book of Matthew. Chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 4. How the devil comes to, 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 to deceive and to, to tempt Jesus. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 3 to 10. It says, And now the tempter came to him, Jesus, and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Why? For it, he said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So that's what Jesus said. And he answered and said to him, men shall not live by bread alone. So what is he saying? You are hungry now, 40 days, 40 nights, you have fasted. Now it's time for you to turn this into bread. So what is he doing? Lust of the flesh. Turn stone into bread. Prove your power. Uh, uh, and a craving desire for food. You have this hunger, your craving, your longing. You know, it's interesting, food cravings. Now, I'm, what I'm talking about is food that don't heal, foods that don't, are, not, are not helpful for you. That's one. But then there is this uncontrollable urge that people just eat and eat and eat and they forget to look after themselves. And, and, and it's just that uncontrollable. You're like, how can you eat so much? How can you drink so much of soda? How much? How can you? You, you just, just leave like with sugar and sugar and sugar and meat and meat and meat. You know, some children would not never take vegetables. Why? Because the craving is not for their vegetables and it's very important for them. So, so think about that. So here the devil comes and says, well, you're hungry and you say you're the son of God. Prove it by, by turning these stones into bread and, and eat it. And, and he was what he was provoking him to that craving for the flesh to, to produce that. Because in, and, and Jesus said, men shall not live by bread alone, not the cravings of food, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then verse 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For he said, I'll give his angel charge over you and they'll bear you up, lest you dare to put against the stone. What is he saying right now? Pride of life. What he's doing is, he, 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 you know, just do it. God will do it for you. You, you take God's word for personal benefit. Or, or many times people take God's word and say that because they expect God to show up for them. They think they are more important. Pride of life. Uh, even sometimes people think, I have authority and I can do things and get away with these things. No, you can't. You can't get away with sin. Neither can you be right and, and not be recognized by God. That also works that way. Okay, praise the Lord. Let's get back. And that we see is the... Pride of life, pride of life, pride of life. A lot of people get up in the morning, waving, I'm awake, I can manage this day. No, you can't. You need God. You need to pray. You need to commit yourself to God and ask the Holy Spirit's help throughout the day to making decisions, guiding you through what you need to be guided by. And if you do make a mistake, ask the Holy Spirit to come and help you and, and, and show you that's a mistake and that you don't make that. Okay? Alrighty. 
praise God. Where are we? And then we read in verse 7, Jesus uh, said to him, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Okay. Uh, I believe tempting God is thinking and testing God by evil. Like God doesn't test us with evil. So we test God, Lord, if you love me, you're going to do this for me. Lord, if you love me, uh, then you, you let this person be saved and become my husband or my wife. And that's an unsaved person. God doesn't save them for you, them to become your wife or your husband. God is not in the business of doing those things. God wants you to flow in his will and all the things that you will need will come to you so 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 this thing here i see is what adam and eve did is uh, when they saw that it could make them wise they thought that god had kept back something from them it's the same nature people have that they think that god is is testing me or god is purposely not giving this to me and they get angry on god and so that 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 pride of life it's a pride of life there's a test you're going through when you are expecting god to do something and he's it's, you feel like he's not doing it and you're getting angry a little at god and you get angry at the church people stop coming to church or they start stop giving uh, or they they just don't let anybody know they're not giving or uh, they're not praying and that nobody knows that you're praying because you just feel offended because god didn't do anything for you don't let the sin of the pride of life get the best of you that's the forbidden desires that you have it's just all about you it's not all about you it's about what is god willing to do things he 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 is but there are things in your life that you are self-consumed and the world is filled your life and you are being tested and trial and god cannot answer you when you are walking in this lust of the flesh i mean oh, oh pride of life pride will not get answers from god listen to me there is faith there is pride very thin line Pride is, Lord, I deserve it. I know you will do this for me. I'm expecting you to do this for me. Faith is, Lord, I expect it. I believe you will because you said it in your word. I am fully confident there is no other security I have but you, O Lord, because I, have, I delight to do thy will, O God. Amen? So that's, that's different. Okay. Then the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. That means there's the glamour. That's all that I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Then Jesus said to me, him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and you shall only serve him. So that's the lust of the eyes, the, uh, the worldly glory of riches. All I'll give you, the riches, I'll give you all this, this party and friends and all these clothes you can wear and, and uh, photo shoot yourself until you shoot yourself on your foot. <laughs> it's amazing how people just lost track of what is important. I really am really taken by how people cannot put ma. Well, I've, I've seen this, you, you go to a service uh, where, and you're having an event like, for example, it's a, it's a conference. Uh, more people are with their phones trying to take pictures or take videos of this, what's happening, the sermon or the preaching. What they really need to do is put their phone away and enjoy the moment, the pleasure, presence of God. Let it flow, <laughs> you know? let the glory come in. I don't know, some of you might be sitting here answering some family or uh, messaging somebody right now. You better stop, you'll be caught. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's not do that. Let's, let's value things. When you're talking to somebody and they're, they're talking to you and you and the phone, make sure you put the phone down and look into their eyes and, and, and answer them. Don't let phones or, or digital media or any kind of social media destroy your relationship take away the time of communicating you know when people go and sit and have coffee everybody's okay phone yeah 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 all right yes yes put that away put that away especially in church well i'm reading my bible you know what i want to really say at times get a bible <laughs> get a bible <laughs> hallelujah so you see, there's three way th things that uh, I have to be fast here. Okay, I'm about to finish. Uh, 
that the devil tested, tempted, tried Jesus with the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Now when we go to the book of Genesis, you see that he comes, and I will, I'll just uh, let you know where it is found. It's found in Genesis chapter 3 and verse uh, 1 to 6. And, 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 and let me go there and quickly read this and then we'll have an idea what it say. Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 6. And now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw, lust of the eyes, that the tree was good for food, <laughs> lust of the flesh, okay, uh, food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and desirable to make one wise, pride of life, she took the fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband and with her and he ate and then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering you see the same temptation which adam and eve had in the garden was the same thing the devil tempted jesus with and the same scenario is given by by john who says you can't love the word you can't do any kind of relationship with the system of this world where you're given to it. You live in it, you, you, but your, high, your level of operating, your principles should be higher. Your faith, your confession, your belief, your work ethic, it should be all biblical. And yes, I know there are things that are wrong out there, but we need to challenge them. We need to, we need to stand against them and, and not give in to that. And, and if, even if it costs you, certain position and, and, and certain place where you're walking. But if you honor God, the honor of God will reveal in you or, or it be manifested in your life with promotion, okay? But don't give in. Don't give in to the powers of the enemy and the wrong. And, and they expect you to do wrong and lie and cheat and you do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't lie and cheat and try to grow. That's not God's way of doing things, okay? While you've read that, I, 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 before I end today, I want to, I want to end here. Book of Mark chapter 4. Book of Mark chapter 4. Let's go quick, quickly. Let's go there and let's see that. Mark chapter 4 and verse 19. Now Mark chapter 4 is talking about the seed, right? And while reading this yesterday, actually, uh, I saw something. And the Lord showed me this. It says here, Mark chapter 4, verse uh, 19. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes fruit, fruit, unfruitful. Right? Now let me explain to you. Cares of the world has the idea of distraction. Okay? It distracts you. It's an unanxious, right? Unrelaxed attention. It, it, and it, it, it pulls your attention, okay? You, where your mind, a case of the world is an anxious mind, where, where you are unrelaxed. The idea is you are distracted. And that, I believe, is where what the devil uses as the lust of the eyes. You are distracted away. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches is a delusion. It's a deceit. It tells you you, you can have this or you don't have that. God doesn't want you to have that. That's the pride of life. Then the lust of other things, the longings of what is forbidden, desire. That's the lust of the flesh. <laughs> you see that? And what do they do? They choke the word. They strangle it completely. They drown it. The world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, entering in your life, they destroy the promises. Let's put it this way. They, they, and you kill that promise because you are given to up. See, let me tell you, if you're too worldly, you can't have word 
promises fulfilled in your life. It just cannot happen. Because the world things of the cares, the desires, the, 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 the forbidden things that people do and even believers do. You are born again. You've got to crucify that flesh. You've got to die daily. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal something wrong and you repent and you turn away from it. You've got to do that. You've you got to do this. It's, uh, let me show you what it says in Philippians 4 6 right Philippians 4 6 this is how you keep yourself from destruction it says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God prayer and supplication with thanksgiving church let me let me say this above everything I'm saying we all need to return to prayer yes more praying Pray. And those listening, let me tell you, start praying like you've never prayed before. Seek God. Cry out unto Him. Even if tears come out of your eyes in, in repentance and in seeking God and with, with thanksfulness, let it flow openly. Go into that room. Pray. Pray, church. Pray. Pray like you've never prayed uh, uh, prayed before. Uh, pray as if your life depended on it. Pray like if somebody is in the ICU and they're going to die. And if you do not pray, they will die. Pray like the, the nations need you. Your family needs you. you got to pray that way. You've got to seek God's help against this, this lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of the life that you've lived under. You, that's how you were, you were given to it. But the Bible says you now have put off the old man and you have put on the new man, which is clothed in righteousness and true holiness. Holiness. Oh, even, even Jesus said, be he holy as I am holy. What does that mean? Separated, given to God, consecrated to him. Praise God. Pray. Pray, church. I, I, let me tell you, with the word and prayer. I know you go, well, I'm reading. Let's, well, we went to pray. No, I'm not talking about we need to pray. You pray. There's a lot of people who talk about prayer, but they never pray. And everyone sitting here today and everyone listening to me, listen to me. Start praying now. After this sermon, after this play, you start to pray. Give yourself to prayer. Seek God's mercy, forgiveness for your life, disobediences that you've been living in. Uh, because the world or the worldliness that you have become, uh, cut it off. Cut it off your life and, and, and let the grace of God flow. See, the world will choke the promises. The, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lusts are forbidden desires that you have harbored and are doing. Things that are not the fruit of the Spirit. Sins that you, things you need to put away from your eyes, your ears, gossipings and lying and sexual immorality. Church, don't get drowned by the world. If you need to shut your TV, shut it. Put away your social media accounts for a while and give yourself soak in His presence. Walk around His presence. Let Him fill you. Let His anointing flow through you. It's happening right now. Father, I release this anointing upon their life. I come against every opposition. I come against the spirit of the devil holding them bound. To worldliness. And Lord, if there are demonic spirits that have come in and are hurting them and they cannot break free from habits, oppressions, I command you to leave. I command you in the name of my Savior Jesus, leave these people. Let them receive you and be saved. Let them from this day spend more time in prayer, worshipping in the Word. And let them see your power fill them, for the last days are here, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I believe God is moving in your life. I believe something has happened, and, and you will never be the same. Always remember, God the Father loves you. We love you. Pray for you every day. We do. And Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website, www. 
www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page, Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries, to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram, JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLMPG, to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.